So, you want to make a song where you ask your ex if it was good for you and if they're happy and healthy? Well, that's already been done. Copyright exists. DMCA. It's upsetting, really, I know. But listen, you can make another song about, like, pina coladas or something. Actually, wait, that's been done, too. Well, that's unfortunate. Hey, guys, one that's by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we're back once again taking a look at how to create, uh, well, actually not create, but the difference between perspective and orthographic modes on your camera in blender which is really cool so let's get started let's 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 get this thing cracking the first thing i want to do is i want to first of all hit zero to go into my camera's view and you can see that this is basically what you have here you have the default cube looking all nice and handsome you know the way that he looks um and we're gonna go ahead and just select our camera here by clicking this little outline or you can go up here to the right hand side and click camera right there um and go to the camera tab down here at the uh bottom right or bottom center right kind of um, but we can go ahead and go to this type and change it from perspective to orthographic. And as you can see, when it changes, you can see the big difference here in the way that some of these edges are kind of uh, slanted in on the edges here. So it kind of goes like at a at an angle at this way. So it kind of goes like whoa, you know, like that instead of straight down. Um, and the reason is because this is the closer we get to something, even in real life or uh, in a video game or in real life or where, in, when you're in, on a film, you can see when you're closer to something, it gets more distorted. So if I move the camera a little bit closer to the um, cube here, you can see that this uh, tip is a lot more in our face of the cube than it, than this edge down here. So this little circle, this little thing that I'm circling right here, which is the, the back edge of the cube is way, way, way more smaller, way more distorted or whatever you want to say than this little piece that's right in front of our face. Um, you can see here. So if I change our camera's point of view once again to orthographic, you can see that everything is basically the same exact length. So all lines are the same length, especially because this is a cube. You can see that um, all of the edges are completely where they're supposed to be in essence. So um, it makes everything look more uniform and more squared off as opposed to this does, which is much further away as you can see so um that is something that we use a lot in um isometric art so if you've ever seen anything that's isometric it kind of looks like this if you see one of those isometric speed arts on youtube that are so popular actually they kind of used to be popular i haven't seen one in a while but if you ever seen one of those you see like these little things that like sit on here maybe there's like a little building or something you know a little building over here you know you ever see these they they always use orthographic mode for the camera because it creates a nice little um it creates a nice little square where everything is kind of even as opposed to the perspective mode, which looks more like a, I don't know, some kind of first person video game, you know. So you can see the difference here, which is a big, big difference um, the between perspective and orthographic. Um, it just looks more squared off and looks it looks nicer as opposed to this, which looks more like a first person shooter, like I said. But yeah, that's basically it. And you can change the orthographic scale here, as which is basically the zoom. The other cool thing about orthographic is, is that no matter how far away something is, it'll always look this, like it's the same exact size. So if I'm going to go ahead and just delete everything real quick so we can start fresh, ease fresh. Um, let's add in a camera hitting shift A. Let's once again shift and A on your keyboard to add in a camera. We hit uh, zero to go back into the camera's view. Move it back a little bit. No, nope. move it back a little bit. Okay, there we go. Um, and we add in some, like, let's add in some text. So if we add in some text, um, you can see that, where'd my camera go? <laughs> there it is all right you can see we have some text here this text is roughly this size right so if we were to go ahead and add in more text duplicate that by hitting shift d now let's say that i um i want to move this text way back here maybe because i want to light this text differently so if i add in the light and light this text up here you can see that this one has more of like a soft light on it let me just make the background black so you can see easier um has more of a, a soft light on it. Um, and this one back here, maybe I want this one to have like a really, really bright light on it. Um, so we'll duplicate this and move it back. So you can see now that this text back here is much brighter than this one and it's much more moody lighting. I can move this one around and it won't affect the one back there. Now the issue with this is, is that it's a different size, but I haven't scaled it at all. It's just further away, so it looks smaller, obviously. But if I go and I check, if I go to our camera and then I check uh, orthographic, you can see that these texts now look exactly the same size as they were before, because it is no longer taking in the perspective of how far away the text object actually is, which is really, really useful if you're trying to keep something the same size, but you want it to be further away. Very, very cool stuff. Just a very, very 
quick and easy way to kind of visually explain the difference between perspective and orthographic. I hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed today's tutorial. Very simple one, but one that is very useful in some cases. So I hope you can apply this to some scene or some project you're working on in the near future or the far future. You know, that, that works too. Maybe if you're a time traveler, you can, you can apply it to the past. Maybe you do that too. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one. Um, hope you guys have a fantastic 2022 so far. Um, but yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Uh, but until then, bye-bye.